Well, I suppose I should say some words about the Chris Paul trade, right? I did have some other bigger content planned for today, but I just talked about this exact deal on the podcast maybe two days ago, and it has come to pass. So, if you've been living under a rock for around the last five hours, or you were distracted because you were addicted to watching my Twitch streams, shameless plug, the deal sends Chris Paul and Abdel Nader to the Suns for Kelly Oubre, Ricky Rubio, Ty Jerome, Jalen LeQ, and a 2022 first round pick. That pick being very important because the Thunder are now the new Celtics of the 2020s where they have crazy assets going through the decade. They've got somewhere in the neighborhood of, what, 17 first round picks in the next six or seven years? So you've got to assume that somewhere out of there, whether it's trading the assets or actually messing around in the draft, somewhere out of there is going to come a great team at some point throughout this decade. And for that reason, I believe both sides should be happy. You know, there's an obsession with trying to find the winners of trades, and that part is always interesting to me because we never really know who won a trade until around a year, a year and a half, maybe even two years pass. A lot of events have to transfer Inspire, a lot of trades, a lot of games have to be played. So any singular winners of the trade being declared today is purely speculation. But if you're a fan of either team, how could you not be happy? Let's let's start with the Oklahoma City Thunder. So last off season and going back into the playoffs, things looked tragic. They went out in the first round. The Westbrook and Paul George duo had completely disappointed. Then out of nowhere, Paul George wants out. Because Paul George wants out, it only makes sense that Russell Westbrook would want out. And being a small market team, the first thing you worry about is how are we ever going to rebuild from this? Nobody wants to come here. We We've drafted generational talents and lost them all. And now on top of all of that, now we're going to be terrible. And so they swing a trade. They get rid of Paul George for assets. They acquire Chris Paul. The interesting thing with CP3 is it's looking more like he's on the backside of his career when he initially gets there. And it appears to be a move where he's not going to play one game in a Thunder jersey. Yet the contract makes him a bit unmovable. It's a very expensive contract for a guy that we we really don't know what he is anymore. But then he plays out the season in OKC. He increases his value and the team gets to the playoffs. It wasn't just a lost season. They could have easily been in the second round. So you've got the assets that you already had, an asset that's increased its value, and a team that people can actually get behind, a team that people actually believe in, a team that other players will believe in. And so all within a year, Chris Paul went from looking slightly out of place on this roster into a piece that's been moved for what are useful young players and a pick. Kelly Uber has got a lot of potential. Hell, speaking of potential, they had Shea as well. That's probably their guard of the future. And Rubio is also a very useful point guard as well. So considering where the Thunder were, a year ago and how confusing everything looked, they should be very happy with the result here. This is about as good as outcome as you could have hoped for. And now, if you're the Phoenix Suns, where have you been? Well, let's see. You have not been in the playoffs the entire decade. Last time they made it was with the Amari Stoudemire and Steve Nash duo back in 2010, and they've only gotten close a couple of times, including this season, the bubble season. Problem with that is, you drafted Devin Booker in 2015. You've not had a single winning season since drafting him, and you play in a tough conference. Haven't even gotten 500 yet. So you look and you say, oh, well, that's okay, even though Devin Booker has played five seasons, he's under contract right now until 2024. It hasn't even been that much time since he signed his extension. Okay, that's cool. He would not be the first player to secure a bag and then become unhappy with the situation and ultimately ask for a trade. That's very possible. Okay, then you say, well, Chris Paul is not the answer to that long-term solution, just like he wouldn't have been for Giannis because one of my favorite destinations would have been Milwaukee for him if there was a way they could pull that off. I understood that that might bring Milwaukee a championship this year, but still not really ease Giannis's questions about the future. So he doesn't ease any questions for Phoenix's future either. He's going on to be 35 years old soon, and he's got a $44 million player option for the 2022 season. All right, that's a fair point, but what are your options if you're Phoenix? This is not a team that's a free agent destination. This is not any place that winning players or star free agents are flocking to go. So it's not like you can just bank on another talent coming to join Devin Booker and Aiden. You don't want to just let another two years fly by where they barely miss the playoffs. And to me, this comes at a perfect time because Phoenix was right there this year, of course, there was the bubble situation that allowed that to happen, but they'd done everything in their power. They probably should have been in the playoffs this year. Remember, this was after DeAndre Ayton missed a gigantic chunk of the season due to the performance-related drug violation early on. So if he hadn't missed those games, we could say Phoenix might have had the AC, or even higher. It's possible. So in a season where they were right on the brink, for Devin Booker, to me, this is a show of good faith to your young star that we're going to do what we can to make a winning effort. Because not every franchise is about that. Devin Booker has recently discussed his frustration with continually missing the playoffs saying he's done with it. This is a trade that he wanted to happen. And Chris Paul just got done with a team that nobody expected to be anywhere near the playoffs, even with his presence. So going to a team with a young duo that he fits pretty perfectly with, Aiden in the pick and roll, getting Devin Booker easier shots. If you're a Phoenix fan, this is a step in the right direction. This is a franchise that has not had a winning culture for around 10 years now. That's not an environment where you want to be cultivating a potential MVP type player, especially in a conference that is just going to be tougher this year. The Warriors are back. So 
somebody's giving up a spot this year. There was eight teams in the playoffs and the Warriors weren't one of them. Somebody's coming up off a spot. More than likely, there was like two or three other West teams that were also right there for the eighth spot. The Wolves now have D'Angelo Russell, a top pick. They're probably going to be in play. So bottom line, the Bubble Suns had a great run, but they were not guaranteed an eighth spot. They're still not really guaranteed an eighth spot, but they're going to be highly competitive. If I'm charting out my eight in the West right now, they're probably getting a spot. And although they will probably be a first round out, second at best. And so yes, for those that are skeptical, Chris Paul has not fixed the issue or the potential upcoming issue of Devin Booker wanting to play elsewhere one day. But for the moment, this is one of those moves where you can say Phoenix did what they could. And since we're talking about expectations, going back to the Oklahoma City Thunder, even if they fall out of the playoffs this year, which could happen because again, the West has only gotten better. The only place you don't want to be long term anyways is no man's land. So if they're still competitive, but they don't make the playoffs, it literally doesn't matter. They have no championship aspirations right now. They are a building team. They have everything they need to build for the future. They have a respectable product, presumably, to put out on the floor. Both teams, from where we sit right now, came out pretty decent from this trade. But of course, everyone doesn't agree. I see a take that says, the Suns won't win a playoff series during the Chris Paul contract. It's entirely possible that they won't. They may just be a very tough first round out, but they also may not have been in the playoffs at all before the trade. They just punted away their chance at Fred Van Vliet, a long-term court piece, and gave up a juicy first round pick. Okay, well, first of all, I believe somebody's going to overpay Fred Van Vliet, and as much as I love to see him play, as much as I like him as a player, A, I don't think having him on some crazy contract is the answer to the Suns' future, and B, I don't think they're losing sleep over the fact that they just acquired Chris Paul over Van Vliet from a basketball standpoint. The Van Vliet prospect is also long-term, whereas Chris Paul isn't. And in terms of the draft pick, A, the Suns have one for the 2021 draft, which is expected to be a crazy class, so there's that. And B, that is a 2022 pick they gave up. Now, in two years, if the Suns are still missing the playoffs and hoping for a pick to come save Aiden and Booker, I don't think they're in a great place. You could argue that if they did strike gold and they had someone to put with those two, that would be better long term than having Chris Paul on an expiring contract, but that could just as easily not work and then you're looking at Devin Booker beginning to ask for a trade around that time, maybe a year after. So contrast that with the current situation where they will have somewhat of a winning culture. They'll probably be in the playoffs. This will be new to Devin Booker. They might be a more attractive destination. I just believe that eternal losing with a star player that you hope to retain probably is not a good idea. So Chris Paul steers them away from that. The Oklahoma City Thunder and the Phoenix Suns should both be happy for now. They both have situations that they can build positively off of. And in a few years when everything works itself out, we'll see who won. As a side note, unrelated to both teams, I do want to say that I am a bit disappointed that Chris Paul did not land with a contender. I will take my L if a 35 or 36 year old Chris Paul takes the Phoenix Suns to the finals and in the West, by the way, at any point during these two years, but I don't see that happening. This pretty much moves the needle toward the outcome where Paul does retire without a ring and yet he still had an amazing career. And I think the Suns were one of the better destinations if he wasn't going to end up on a contender. Now, of course, my dream was for him to go play with Giannis. On the podcast, I did say the Suns were one of my favorite destinations. Just from a basketball standpoint, I think that's going to be fun to watch. But I thought that Giannis would have benefited greatly from an all-star floor general point guard. And I had no clue how it would happen, whether it would be like a three-team trade or who they would be able to retain. But it was one of the moves that I was keeping my eye on. And now that the move has been promptly removed from the table of possibilities, I'm not really sure what happens with Milwaukee. We may get a scenario where Giannis just stays loyal. He goes the Kevin Garnett route. He signs a contract there and just tries to figure it out. But as far as realistic moves, I'm not really sure how many move the needle type deals are out there now, especially with the Nets looking like they want to make a blockbuster deal. And even if they don't, they're still going to have Kyrie and KD. I don't know, man. Things are getting really interesting over there. I thought that was loosely related to Chris Paul's dealings here. So let me know what you thought about the deal in the comment section below. Do you like the trade? Do you think somebody actually won it? Because I know that's a conversation. If you are a Phoenix or OKC fan, how do you personally feel about the trade for your team? Leave it all down below. Also, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed and hit the bell next to the channel name if you want notifications every time a new video drops. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.